Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and today we're going to wrap up our discussion on the Scream trade paperback. Please go buy this right now before we get into spoilers and talk about the final two issues, which is issues five and six uh, by Clay Chapman and also Chris Mooneyham as the artist. And then I think there's a like an inker and he's got you know, some other people that came in in this book. So I have the credits up on screen and stuff. But, uh, you know, obviously this is wrapping up what we were doing for Scream Week just to assist uh, and you know, Allie, our friend, I always called her Andy, which is the screen character's name. Um, so I'm sure she won't mind that I made that mistake. Um, but Allie, our friend, let's talk scream and also the scream for carnage count. Um, I already talked about them in the previous episode that I talked about scream. So if you want to go back and check that out, I'll put all their links down below so you can follow their efforts. They did a whole cool thing for scream week to try to raise awareness, get more people talking about the book and try to bring it back for at least, you know, a couple more issues or one big issue, something, uh, they just want the storyline that this sets up they want it wrapped up, you know? And I think, uh, cause clearly Clay Chapman had some kind of goal or plan with some of these characters and now we're, might not know what's gonna happen to them directly. Uh, so yeah, I hope they get to tell their story and conclude it at some point. And the way that's gonna happen is if we all go out and buy the trade paperback, which is out now in stores, um, or you can get it on Comixology for like 10 bucks and you get all six issues, the first six issues of the book, all in there. I thought it was only gonna be five issues and they added the sixth issue, which is awesome. And then I'll also put a link down below to the change.org. If you wanna go sign that petition, they need 500 signatures, they're close to 200. So go make some noise over there, sign it, get your friends to sign it. And maybe that can help you know Marvel see that there is an audience out there for at least a one shot. If we can at least get one more, like a King in Black one shot starring Scream that uh, kind of wraps up the story that uh, Chapman and, uh, and Mooney Ham and, and Gary Brown were doing, that'd be awesome. So with all that said, all those links are below, follow those accounts, uh, support their efforts. And this is me adding to their efforts in a very small way because they're going way above and beyond uh, that I've uh, been able to go just because of work and everything else going on this week and me not being on social media anymore. But I wanted to at least make these three videos where we break down the contents of the trade paperback. So again, if you don't wanna know how the, the uh, Scream story wraps up in issue five, and if you don't wanna know the setup for the next story arc that we may not get anymore, hopefully we do though, if you don't want to know that stuff, turn away now. Go get the book. I encourage you to do that one way or the other. Go buy the book and uh, and support it and, you know, send Marvel the message that we need a conclusion to this book because it's really good. And uh, definitely do that for Ghost Rider 2 when that trade comes out. We'll talk about that more when that trade comes out. So, um, so yeah, so Scream. Issue 5 picks up where uh, we left off in the last episode in issue four, when we talked about issue 4 where Andy was being swallowed and then that was also being intercut with flashbacks to when the Grendel's mother was fighting Thor, um, who at that time was called Beowulf uh, in, in the past. So I guess Thor has now upgraded to Mjolnir the hammer and has gone seeking Grendel's mother in the past to put her down once and for all. And so that's this story. They kind of wrap that up, show Thor, you know, beat the crap out of Grendel's mother, hit her with the hammer. I think, uh, you know, Grendel's mother was grabbed Thor and was going to fly him into space, which that wouldn't have hurt him anyway, but I think she was just desperate. And he gets imbued with the, you know, the electricity, uh, shocks her, electrocutes her, and then jumps up and smashes like her head and neck in. And so she gets hit so hard, it, it's, it does such a, uh, a large amount of damage to her that she hits into the water and then sinks to the bottom and is needs to heal for, I guess, generations because of how hard Thor hit her, basically, um, with the hammer. And so I thought that was neat, but it also does contradict what happened in Captain Marvel number 20 and 21. And I know some people will go, well, who cares if it contradicts the past as long as it, you know, like past stories, as long as it's, you know, um, you know, tells this story well. And you're right, except they referenced Captain Marvel number 20. If they didn't put the a little editor's note, you know, uh, this, you know, Grendel's mother existed in Captain Marvel number 20. That's when she first awoke. Um, if they didn't mention that, uh, then I wouldn't have known about those comics existing, actually, unless one of you guys told me about it. I wouldn't have known. So uh, so to me, I'm like, well, you reference that she was trapped in a little orb and Merlin had to summon her out of this orb. So how did Thor hit her so hard she fell into an orb? Um, and then she ended up at the bottom of the ocean after she got summoned out because then she became like a professional wrestler or something at the end of the issue 21 of Captain Marvel. So there is definitely some discrepancies there, but I will give uh, Clay Chapman some credit in this one when they're retelling the story of Thor, you know, hitting um, her in the head and knocking her to the bottom of the ocean where she apparently remained for, you know, generations. I think someone said 
did she crash landed into a village or something like that or like a, a near a village or, or some villagers died or i don't know something like that i saw some something like that in one of my comments earlier um earlier tonight when i was you know from when i'm recording this and uh and i'm like i don't know i didn't see anything like that mentioned in the book but maybe that's part of it i mean I, maybe i missed it um but anyway she it doesn't make sense continuity wise if you count captain marvel she was put in an orb and then she was awakened from that orb and then she became a professional wrestler maybe after that she went into the ocean but that was modern day 2001 so i don't know <laughs> i don't know what's going on uh but then sh there is a line though like i said to give clay chapman some credit after they do the retelling story of thor hitting her she says uh you humans you know, and parasites don't actually know the truth. Um, she's like, that's, you know, you, you tell your stories and you get all your facts wrong and you get your, you know, and your lies get interwoven into it. And that's not how it really happened. Or she didn't say it exactly that way, but she kind of hints at that retelling of the story of Thor beating her is not 100% accurate. So maybe that kind of plays into how she ended up in the orb and all these other things. So who knows? Or maybe she got summoned through an orb out of the ocean by, you know, but she was at full strength in 2001. So it's weird that she's saying that now she's getting back to full strength now. So, yeah, I don't know. There's, so there's some continuity issues there. But um, but that aside, this was a pretty neat book because really this whole thing is a battle. Andy got swallowed in the last issue because now we're in present day. We did all the Thor flashback stuff. And now in present day, Andy gets swallowed and the suit is being taunted by Grendel's mother. And the suit says, no, I don't want to be a part of you. And then goes down into the throat of Grendel's mother rebonds with Andy, saves her life before she completely drowns, and then they rip out of the the stomach of Grendel's mother, uh, you know, as a symbolic, like, oh, we're reborn kind of moment. And so she leaps out of her stomach, lands, you know, gets up on land. Uh, Grendel's mother follows her there, and they're running because they need to, you know, get their strength back. Andy almost died, so she has to rejuvenate, you know, the, the suit has to heal her and stuff. So they're just running, uh, and this big giant monster is following them through New York. And you're just like, where are all the other superheroes at? You know, uh, but that's fine. I mean, that happens so much in comics where it's like, hey, this is this person's book. We have to isolate this story or whatever. Uh, so anyway, so um, Andy climbs up like a giant uh, lift and there's, you know, there's uh, all these support beams around and stuff. And it's like a construction site that's happening. And she um, it leads the Grendel's uh, mother there. And the two of them get into a fight and, you know, Andy gets in some good shots, rips out the Grendel mother's eyes uh, to blind her. And then while she's blinded, she wraps these uh, really intense, uh, you know, steel cables around the throat of the Grendel, uh, Grendel's mother, and then drops her and hangs her. But there, like, as Andy says, there's no neck to snap. Uh, there's no, you know, the, she, she's not breathing She's because she's kind of an underwater creature now, kind of. Um, so she's not breathing so this isn't going to stop her it's just going to slow her down she's unconscious and she's hanging um so andy gets back down to street level and is like oh my god that you know she's finally getting healed back so i kind of like that that she was healing while battling like while the suit was battling it was also healing andy and i'm like that's pretty neat because they do that in venom sometimes too and i, I always think that's a cool thing because it ups the stakes you're like oh is 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 eddie gonna heal in time is andy gonna heal in time and so i kind of like that they were doing that and so she gets the one up wraps the cables around her and then the Grendel's mother decides you know, she wakes up and she's like no this isn't over and she's fighting to get at Andy and she's pulling the cables even tighter and it ends up decapitating her completely so the Grendel's mother ends up killing itself uh, which is weird because it seemed like the story was resolved at that point like Andy's like okay it's not dead it's but it's gonna hang there it'll wake up and you know we'll recharge and we'll fight it back and then it just get, you know struggles enough to kill itself or something so it's like Eh, whatever it's fine it, it worked and i understand they have to they had to wrap the story up and stuff so uh so anyway she gets decapitated and the fbi show up so we have detective henley there and his partner castro i think is her name she talks about how her boyfriend broke up with her because of the nightmare she's been having ever since she's been seeing these mutated sea creature people um and so i guess in the, in her sleep she was like dream punching him and you know <laughs> or something like that um i've definitely been there where someone you're sleeping next to someone and they they hit you and you're like what the heck and they're having like a nightmare um so i guess her boyfriend left her for those reasons for getting punched in the face um and uh and so yeah so she like she's talking about that story and then henley's there and he's like we got to find andy benton because every time one of these creatures shows up you know like at feast and stuff it seems like andy's around so we should go talk to andy and then before they can, the FBI show up and they're like, hey, ever since Doverton, which is obviously from Carnage USA, uh, and, you know, and we saw Misty Knight and, you know, and everything and, uh, and what's his name, John Jameson, like they were sent in by the FBI to look into the cult of Carnage. So 
they, you know, they, they're tying all those elements in. So the FBI show up and say, hey, ever since Doverton, um, you know, and the cult of Carnage and all that stuff and Carnage USA, the FBI has been in charge of symbiote relations because, you know, we have an investment in that case. And so all information from S.H.I.E.L.D. and all these other uh, agencies are been passed to us. So I guess that's why there's been no more real agent venoms and other things like that. Everything's going through the FBI now. So like, hey, that's cool. That's something neat to learn and stuff. So the FBI is like, get out of my crime scene. So Henley's like, okay, Castro, let's go try to find Andy. And then at the end of the book, Andy goes back to feast because she has nowhere else to go. She's homeless and she decides to go sleep there for the night. And Aunt May comes up to her and they have a great moment where Aunt May says, look, I saw that you are bonded to a, a creature that I've seen on the news and I've seen Spider-Man interact with. And she's like, and so I, I don't know exactly what you're going through, but I'm here for you if you need it. You know, I know, you know, it's hard to find family in the world and I'm happy to be a part of your family if you'll let me. So the last page is really great because it's Aunt May being hugged um, by, you know, Andy. It's the two of them hugging. And then you see this woman coming into the frame in the background. So you're wondering like, oh, is that Andy's mother? You can't really tell because in the art, she's kind of distant. So that's issue five. It's kind of how that wraps up. And that wraps up the Grendel's mother story, at least for now. So I guess her body's in possession of the FBI. Doesn't mean she's dead. She could still be reanimated or come back at some point. Um, you know, getting your head chopped off as a symbiote creature, uh, you know, shouldn't be that big of a deal, really. But uh, we'll see where that goes from there. And hopefully that'll pop up at some point in King and Black or whatever. And like I said, hopefully these, uh, you know, creators that work on this book get another tie-in or some kind of one shot where they can wrap up some of the story because issue six starts a new story called uh like think of the children or you know something like stuff the suffering of the children or something like that and it says you know suffering of children part one whatever the story is called something about the children so i'll have the credit up there again because i can't remember um but this issue i really like because this is a punisher and sandman issue or at least they're in the issue but uh, but it does focus very heavily on andy and her life so it you know at the end of the last issue we saw her hug aunt may and we saw this woman come in we find out in this issue when andy wakes up the next morning that the woman is actually a young girl that's about andy's age named uh, guinevere and i was wondering about this because obviously like you know beowulf and they're t tying all these old like uh, stories and characters and things like that into thor mythology and into you know venom mythology now and stuff Guinevere, if I'm not mistaken, is is from like those time periods too, at least the name is. So I just found that very coincidental that this uh, woman named Guinevere pops up and it seems like she shows a romantic interest in Andy, which m might be true or it could be a cover to where she's trying to get close to Andy because of Andy's connection to, you know, the symbiotes and the Grendel's mother. So I don't know if Guinevere is secretly like a, 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 a you know, an an immortal or something, or maybe she's like a reincarnation of the original Guinevere or a knight of some kind. I don't know. So I'm curious. I'm, I would love to see where that goes. Obviously, we might not get that chance, but I hope, you know, Clay Chapman does something with that at some point down the line. But they kind of set them up to where it, sh it seems like Andy has a new love interest and it's this Guinevere girl. And so this Guinevere girl invites her to, you know, like the, um, you know, whatever those, the big carnival wheels are called, the uh, Ferris wheels. And she's like, uh, you know, meet me at one of these Ferris wheels. Let's, you know, sit on a Ferris wheel together. And they do, and they kind of hang out, and it's kind of a first date kind of thing where they're just kind of talking. So they don't really make any real moves towards each other, but it's clear that there's an uh, maybe an interest there. But again, I don't know if that's a cover from Guinevere, or if maybe Guinevere is like, oh, she's, I just want to learn about her. But maybe Guinevere is genuinely falling for Andy over this conversation they have so could be i don't know it was it was pretty well written it was well done but andy uh, while all this is going on with andy there is this creepy elderly couple that are going around new york kidnapping kids and uh, and so and they're like you know torturing them they're bringing them down throwing them in their cellar they're you know um they they first lead them in they're like hey you're homeless like let's feed you let's get you some clothes so they bring the kids over to their house they you know give them clothes they give them fresh clothes they give them food and everything like that and then uh once they're all buttered up they drop them in their basement and then torture them and, and eventually kill them, I guess, um, or do other horrible things to them. So it's a pretty dark story. And while that's going on, uh, there's a lot of elements happening here. It's a very busy comic because uh, there's like three or four plots happening at once. So you have the Andy thing. You have Detective Henley working with Aunt May trying to find the missing kids. So he's going around questioning other kids in the neighborhood trying to find where some of these kids are going. One of the kids mentions that they were kidnapped or that they were kidnapped by this weird couple, but now everyone serves Saint D 
And so he's like, St. D. And they're like, yeah, that's the street name of this person we all serve. And then you see that kid get into a car, much like the creepy elderly person's car, and gets taken away. And Henley has to like chase after him, but he, he gets, you know, the car gets away, so he can't help out. So he's like, all right, I gotta find out who this St. D is, a new player in town. Apparently there's this creepy couple that's stealing kids, so we gotta deal with that. So there's a lot of plots happening in this issue. And then while all that's happening, you have the Punisher showing up to assassinate some guy. There's a Mayor Fisk, you know, obviously Wilson Fisk is mayor in the comic books, uh, Kingpin. He's now the mayor of New York City. So he's up talking about something, he's on a podium. So Punisher has him in the crosshairs and he's like, nah, not today, he's not my target today. And then Punisher turns over and sees this other older guy um, who's like a senator and apparently he does bad things to kids. So again, really dark story. It's a, one of those stories where if you were the editor on this book, you would call Clay Chapman up and be like, are you feeling all right? I mean, first we had mutated uh, fish people that were really gross looking uh, and the artist did a really good job, by, you know, portraying. And now you have the story about kids, like, are you okay, man? Like, you know, uh, but uh, but yeah, obviously portraying a, a, a really dark side. We always talk about street level stuff with some of these characters and how we wanted Venom to go that route. They're definitely going that route here with Scream, which is a shame because I want more of this now. Um, not that the, the dark, you know, kidnapping kid stuff, I, I could deal with a little less of that, obviously, but obviously that stuff does happen. So this book addressing that and, and dealing with that um, and keeping it street level is pretty neat because obviously we had the big Grendel's mother, which felt very cosmic, but was grounded the whole time. I like that. I, I think uh, I think Clay Chapman does a good job taking these characters with these uh, now, you know, Thor and Venom and lore tie together. So Venom feels very cosmic now. It feels very big and epic. Um, but, you know, Clay Chapman kept this story very grounded. So in this issue of Punisher going, okay, I'm going to kill this senator guy because of the bad stuff he does. But then Sandman, of, of all things, shows up and grabs the senator, puts him inside of him, because obviously he's a big sand creature, and he puts the senator inside of him with the, with the little girl that the senator was, like, creeping up on. And uh, he's like, no, he's like, don't worry, I'm protecting a little girl. He goes, but you're not, I'm not gonna let you kill the senator guy. He needs to, you know, um, serve his crimes. He, we need to find out who else in the Senate or, you know, whoever he's working for, other senators, other people with uh, high profiles and a lot of money. Like we need to, there's a chain of these people out there. So I, I'm wondering if it's kind of like related to some of that stuff that's been happening in the news recently with um, all these like celebrities and people that are on this list, um, you know, that may have, done horrible things to kids and stuff, which I don't doubt. I mean, that's entirely possible. There's a lot of weirdos out, uh, you know, working in these big industries who are uh, higher up and, um, and it's anything's possible and it's really grotesque when it is. So I don't know if this is a way of dealing with that in a story without being super direct about it, but it was, uh, it was neat. So Sandman's like, no, he's got to go to jail and he's going to, we're going to have him turn in all of his friends to do this and all that. And Punisher's like, nope. I'll find his friends, I'll, I'll find them, and I'll kill them all too. And Sandman's like, no, we're not doing that. He's like, because I can't risk you missing even one of them. And you would think that would, you know, maybe have Punisher go, that's eh, kind of a point. Maybe I should wait and let this guy turn in all of his friends and I can have a list to go off of. Um, but what if he omits someone from the list on purpose after he gives like two or three names? What if he doesn't give the other names? He's like, I can't risk it. I'll find all the information out myself. I'm going to go after it. I'm going to, I'm going to take the guy down. So you have Punisher trying to kill the Senator in front of all these people. You have Sandman trying to protect the guy and turn him in, uh, for his crimes. And then you have Scream kind of caught in the middle. So there's this great big two page spread where like Scream knocks down Punisher. She fights Sandman. Then Sandman pushes her away and fights Punisher. And it's kind of a cool little sequence that I really liked a lot. I thought it was delivered really well the art wise and so um so that battle happens and then you know and that's why like andy left her date with guinevere to go intervene in this and then when she does uh she you know they stop uh you know sandman is like all right let's like screams like give me the girl just give me the girl and i'll i'll get out of here you can take your prisoner and we can get away from punisher so sandman's like fine so he has the girl like um you know over here and he like summons her out of the sand but then while he's doing that um the senate guy digs himself starts digging himself out of the sand and he peeks his head up and so Andy, as Scream, grabs the little girl and says, all right, I got you, I got you, you're going to be okay. And then she looks up, she's like, uh-oh. And then, you know, Punisher comes in, slides down the sand hill that Sandman made, and the senator's head is sticking out, and Punisher has this big, giant, like, John Rambo knife and chops the senator's head off right in front of everybody. Um, and then Punisher gets away, and he turns the girl over to the police, and Sandman is like, okay, I guess I failed at what I wanted to do. And he's like, so, you know, next time I see you idiots, you know, scream and punish her, 
I'm going to go, you know, I'm going to just take you down. But, you know, now that police and all these people are here and the mayor is here and everything, he's like, I'm just going to slink away. So Sandman disappears and Punisher comes over to screen. He's like, hey, I like the way you work. Maybe we can team up again sometime. And she's like, no, like your brand of justice is awful. And it didn't seem like you once at one point cared about the little girl. And he's like, I, yeah, I did a little, but he's like, I wanted to make sure the bad guy died uh, first and foremost. And she's like, yeah, that's why I don't believe in your brand of justice. And that's why I want to make sure this little girl's okay. So Andy turns a little girl over and Punisher sees her transform from Scream to Andy. So now he knows that she's Andy. So he's like tailing her later on in the issue where Andy's like leaving because the police come up to her and they're like, how come every time there's a dead body or something like that? Like it's always, I always, I, I seem to see you around. And Andy's like, I'm in the wrong place at the wrong time. What can I say? And he's like, yeah, well, you know, are you still at feast? And she's like, for now. And he goes, okay, well, if I have questions, I'll come there and find you. And she's like, whatever, fine, I guess. So as she's walking home back to feast, Punisher is watching her go back. And, he's, and he even does like a little gun move. And meanwhile, while that's happening, the St. D thing wraps up along with the kid. So the kid who got away from Henley in the car, uh, he goes, in, you know, he goes into like this church um, at the end, and you have uh, the the older elderly family, the, the the husband and wife, the elderly couple that were kidnapping kids and torturing them in their basements. They're now dead, hanging in the church, like hung up by chains. And uh, Demogoblin uh, Shriek, who has become Demogoblin in Cult of Carnage, she is now standing in front of uh, the the two dead elderly people, and she is now surrounded by the children of the neighborhood, the homeless children of the neighborhood. And so, uh, yeah, so I guess she came in at some point, killed the elderly couple, took the kids that they had in their custody, brought them all to this church. And I don't know what her plans are. I don't know what was going to go on from here because this is where the graphic novel ends. This is where issue six ends. And we kind of don't know where it's going to go from here. I mean, they set up Andy with a relationship. They have Henley working with her, possibly Punisher tailing her, Aunt May treating her like family. And then we have, you know, Demogoblin out there. So, yeah, it's such a shame because this issue was really, really good. Actually, I think issue six might be my favorite issue out of the whole bunch, although it is kind of a, a plot mess where it's like three or four plots all over the place. And they do kind of some shortcut storytelling to button them up at the end. And normally I don't like that kind of stuff, but I was intrigued this whole time and I thought the art was really solid. So, so to me, I think this is one of the better issues, although issue one was really good too. Issue six was really good as well. And so I want to see what happens next. I mean, I really do. And I hope you guys do too. Hope you want to see it enough to go out and buy the trade paperback. I think that will send a good message to Marvel. Go support Ali at the Let's Talk Carnage account. Go, you know, watch her YouTube channel. Link to that down below as well with her Twitter. Scream for Carnage. Go follow them on Twitter and support their efforts. And then sign the change.org. And, you know, maybe with a combination of graphic novel sales, both in print and digital, the change.org signature, uh, you know, maybe uh, making some noise on Twitter. Try to get it trending one day or as close to it as you can. You know, I know it's a small fan base, but, you know, I, I we all do just as long as you contribute some effort in some way if you are genuinely wanting to see where this story goes like i am you know do something you know like make something like for me it was making these three videos and bringing awareness and stuff to like ali and them although i feel like they probably them still being on social media they're probably getting way more views and clicks and things that than my stuff does um but still I wanted to contribute in some way because I believe in their efforts and I also believe in this character and it's a character that I never had a million, you know, like I didn't have like a big interest in, you know, like I, but I do now. I think under the, uh, you know, it being Andy now, because Donna Diego, I never felt like they really did anything super interesting with that character. And although I did like Patricia Robertson, she wasn't, you know, she was screamed for like an issue or something like that in the uh, Absolute Carnage stuff. So to me, having it be Andy, having these other personalities inside, there's so much more to explore with this character. I mean, really, they barely scratched the surface, and I'm pretty sure Clay Chapman probably feels that way as well. You know, he probably feels, man, there's so much more I can do with this character. And I agree. And when you see potential like that, you got to make a move on it. You got to push it out there. So hopefully Marvel does. Like I said, even if we get a King in Black one-shot or post-King in Black, we get some kind of one-shot that deals with Andy and wraps up the Demogoblin story and buttons up some of this stuff and uses some of the art that Gary Brown and these other artists were doing for those issues that never got published. Like, I would love to see it in some form. So Marvel, please, and everyone out there, please go make some noise. Revive Scream, you know, hashtag Scream for Scream, hashtag uh, whatever you got to do. Follow uh, Ali and follow uh, Scream for Carnage. Follow their efforts. Let's Talk Scream. Follow all of them on Twitter. Join in their noise making. And, uh, and if you have a channel of your own, you got anything else, 
review the graphic novel, talk about it, go out and buy it and review it and talk about this book and get your listeners and your viewers to know what's going on. And, uh, you know, and let's try to see if we can save it on some level, even if we get all I would like to see is just a one shot. If you could do like a 48 page one shot where they can wrap up the Demon Goblin story, to me, that would be awesome. Like that's you know, that to me, I don't feel like that's asking too much. I mean, maybe bringing the book back for four or five issues is asking too much. If it's not, I want that. Uh, but if it is asking too much, then I will happily take a giant size one shot that just has a wrap up to this Demon Goblin story. So um, yeah, you guys let me know what you think. What did you think of Scream number five and number six? I'd love to hear all your thoughts down below. If I missed anything, forgot anything, you know, I, I think I forgot to uh, mention the Rapunzel reference they did in issue three or four. That was really cool. I like that they tied that in. And what do you think about Guinevere? Do you think she's a plant? Do you think she might actually be, um, you know, someone? I just find her name... It could have just been Clay Chapman going, ah, just let's just name her Guinevere because it has that old kind of feel to it, um, that like, you know, round table type feel. Maybe that's why they did it. And it's like, that's fine if that's if that's the reason. But it made me immediately think, oh, is she someone, you know, that is tied to the Grendel's mother in some way or, or tied to like knights that hunted these dragons or whatever. I don't know. Could be cool. I could uh, give Andy a really interesting love interest if that were the case, you know. Um, so let me know all your thoughts down below in the comments and we'll continue our conversation down there as always. So now that Spring Week is done, I will be getting back into, I think I have one more Matt Gargan Venom story to mention. And then we're going to dive back into Flash Thompson. So we have a lot of stuff coming up on this channel. I also want to talk about Venom number 27 and Venom the End. And I might do those two together because actually they kind of tie together in some way where Venom gets new powers and it's very reminiscent of Venom the End. So we'll talk about all that coming up. I'll try to get some videos out to you guys over the weekend. So thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you all in the future. Peace.